Brilliant. So Danny Flexen here, four seconds out. Delighted to be joined by my old friend, Dave Colwell. Dave, how are you? I'm very good, mate. Thank you. How's you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Um, not not too affected by the uh, restrictions at the moment. Still getting to speak to lots of people, which is great. More, more so from the comfort of my home than, than before. But, you know, you get used to it. You adapt, as I'm sure you know. You have to. Yeah, you have to. Otherwise, um, otherwise it gets a little bit too tough, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah, we adapt and we move on, mate, best we can. Boosted, obviously, by a, a great fight in the early hours of Sunday morning for the UK audience between Vasily Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez. A surprising result for a lot of people, uh, but I just thought an excellent performance, especially given the age of Lopez. What, what did you make of the fight? Like you said, 23 years old, um, to do what he did, it takes some doing. And, and, you know, it's all right being confident all the way through in the build-up. Um, but when he gets closer and when you go in against, you know, you go in a, an elite fighter like that, an absolute legend like that, surely at 23 years old, you start having doubts and things. But I think he got off to a, a fantastic start. He knew what he had to do. He followed his game plan. Um, for me, my worry was always about his size being, you know, being so much bigger physically and, and stronger, having that punch power. And, and I think that um, round one, I do think that he caught uh, Lomachenko with a, with a shot. Not not flush, but he caught with a shot that, that registered enough with Lomachenko to think, oh, hang on a minute, this kid can really punch. So he was very, very focused on taking away from Lopez and, and trying to make him miss, as he does. But normally what he does is he's, he'll make you miss, he'll, he'll make you commit. And he'll take things away from you and become in a position where he can fire off his own shots. He couldn't do that because he had to be, he, it was almost like he had to guarantee himself that he could get into a position after making him miss, get in a position where he's safe to throw his punches and not get caught. He didn't want to get caught with anything. And it's almost like as each minute goes by, you're still looking, you're looking, you're looking. Each minute goes by, another minute, another round, and so on and so on. And he never found that opportunity. And that is because Lopez boxed so well. You know, he felt the power early doors, but because Lopez didn't commit and didn't fall for his traps and fall for what, what Lomachenko usually does to his fighters, to his opponents, because he had the discipline and the mental fortitude to do that, he was always in control. And, the, you know, the long right hands to the body and, and, and the jab, the sharpness, and it kept Lomachenko moving constantly. And like they said, you know, they were they wanted him moving backwards. They had him doing that quite, quite all the way through the fight. And each round that's going back, you're going back, you're thinking, come on, get, cause I'm a big Lomachenko fan. So before the fight, I, I wanted Lomachenko to win because I'm a big fan of his. Um, and then uh, before you know it, he's chasing. And then because he's chasing, I felt that even when, you know, in the rounds where he, puts, he started putting rounds back to back yeah. and he started putting the pressure on down the stretch. Even then, wasn't the normal Lomachenko where he will mix the head and the body, head and the body. You don't know whether he's going to finish downstairs or finish upstairs. The flurries that he caught, uh, that he would catch Lopez with, he would go upstairs and still carry on going upstairs and miss the ne next two shots. And, and so Lopez would drive those moments out. Whereas normally you'll see him when he steps in, he'll dig him downstairs, finish upstairs and tap him upstairs and go back downstairs. He didn't really do that much. Um, so maybe again, he was flustered because he kind of knew that, that he was, you know, he was struggling to, to get any rhythm and any time enough. Um, so maybe he, he was snatching his shots when he got into those positions as, as the rounds unfolded and we got into that, you know, that, that final stretch. When he had that period of success between round seven to eight till around round 11, did you feel it was yeah. because he was starting to get desperate or found some urgency because he was behind? Or was it more that the sting by that point had been taken out of Teofimo Lopez's shots? Well, I think that when you are in there as a fighter, you kind of gauge as the power starts dropping, um, the strength, the physical strength, the power. And I think in the first couple of times that he managed to get in there, he saw that the timing of his shots, it knocked Lopez's head back and, and Lopez would look a little bit more uncomfortable. And he did look a little bit flustered when, when Lomachenko got in there. Um, only, only obviously briefly, very, very briefly. And I think maybe that gave him the, the, the confidence then because he had some success. Whereas in the first eight, seven, eight rounds, 
six, uh, sorry, six, seven rounds. He had zero success. Yeah. Whereas then all of a sudden he has that bit of success. Then he's kind of right. Okay, now let's go to work. Um, but again, I think Lopez wrote it out fantastically. Um, and whereas you know you were expecting uh, a big finish from from Lomachenko in round twelve, it was Lopez that 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 finished really well in round twelve. Um, I just thought it was a very very mature performance from from Lopez. A very very mature performance. Yes, he's quality. Yes, he's yeah. Yes, he's physically very strong. But it's the fact that he he held it together up there during the fight, during the and, and then during those moments where the experienced champion, the the, the legend, the, the you know the pound for pound king, then starts cranking it up. He didn't get flustered where it just all went to shit. It kept himself together. Do you know what I mean? And that's very very impressive for a twenty three year old kid. Now we know Lopez from what he said in a post fight interview wants to move up immediately to one forty. Mm. Um, he's got the size and the frame for it certainly. What does Lomachenko do next? Does he drop back down? Does he pick the belts back up at lightweight? I've always said I I feel sorry for him because people forget that boxing at 135 pound lightweight is well out of his comfort zone. Mm. You know, he's been taking those chan- th- those um uh, those opportunities and those fights because in the lower weight divisions there's not been any big fights for him as such. Um, so I, I I feel sorry for him because he doesn't he now I've seen Twitter I've seen how people write him off now and oh, he was never as good as what man he's been boxing above his own station for a long time and he's been so impressive he's been doing you know he's, he's been unbelievable with, um, Chocolatito didn't they I, exactly exactly and and this is the problem is people have these very short memories and and uh, fickle mentalities. Um, I would like to see him go back to his natural ways, you know, super feather, feather, super feather. Uh, them sort of weight divisions where they're not physically so much, but because he has to get past the physicality of them first in order to then let his ability to take control. Um, and so that's quite a big part of his puzzle and, and, and his disadvantages that he's got. And he's been doing that. But in Lopez, you've got a guy... There's one thing being physical and, and being strong and um, and you know being ranger, but when you have that dynamite, I remember Johnny Nelson once said to me when he boxed Pete Robo. Remember Pete Robo was was yeah. very very heavy handed, and there was this always this, there was this rumor about oh Pete Robo can really really punch. Mm-hmm. Johnny says he went in and the first round he got Robo hit him in the chest, and he thought fuck that I'm not getting it off for him. He can really really punch. And I, I got the feeling that, that that's what happened with, with Lomachenko, with Lopez. I think in the first round when he got cuffed, it, it wasn't clean. And I think that, and when you have that along with your physical advantages of height, reach, physical weight, you know, natural weight when you get in the ring, he was, you know, Lopez was probably a welterweight when he got in the ring. But when you have those advantages, but you have that deadly power as well, that's very, very hard to overcome. And I think the guys that he's fought beforehand, Top top qualifiers, I'm talking about that have got the height, the natural physically bigger than him. Um, you look top fighters like Luke Campbell, tall, long, rangy, southpaw. Yes, he it's hard, but he didn't have that that power that will switch your lights off. There's a big difference when you're fighting guys that can switch your lights off, you know, mentally and physically. You know, you, you, you're always wary of that, so you're always kind of like playing catch up if you're giving away a physical advantage as well, and um. I think that was a big thing. So where where you, you go back down to his own natural sort of weight, then I think you know obviously I, I do think that his his age is, is not so much age, but maybe wear and tear from all the amateur yeah. fights, all the training camps. You know that's natural. Um, and and I'll be honest with you, I would much I would much rather see a fighter age where you can visibly see it naturally, rather than these guys that are going on so on throughout these weight divisions and never seem as though it's changing in one bit. They seem to be getting stronger each weight division they're going up throughout. And is that, you know, is that natural? Is that, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, you have to have a school of thought. Well, how is that possible? These guys going up through these weight divisions never seemingly get in trouble by punches they're getting it with, even though they're getting, getting higher and higher up against bigger men, never seemingly, having a reduction in their own punch power as they're going. I'm not just talking one or two weight divisions. I'm talking about when people are going up multiple weight divisions, you know, that is, you know, and, and, and not aging. For me, that is where you think, oh, what's going on there? Do you know what I mean? But 
I look at Golovkin, Golovkin looks like he's aging. I look at Lomachenko, looks like he's aging. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's quite natural. It's, you know, that's what happens in boxing. Um, but, you know, we'll, um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what he does. But I, I'm, I'm a big fan of his. And, and I'm gutted for him that you know, all these people are just writing him off and, and saying, that, you know, it wasn't as good as what it was. He's a very, very good fighter, a great fighter. Of course, it wasn't the only show on Saturday night. We saw a matchroom show mm. in Peterborough, um, topped by Luis Ritz and Miguel Vasquez. It's a shame in the way the controversy around the scoring, because yeah. the, the show itself, main event not so much, but the undercard was a real yeah. cracker, I thought. Really good show. Um, Mate, what, that's what I thought. What, what did you I, make I just, the, I, I, Go on. Sorry. I, I, that's why I just, just can't care what you, you're saying there. I, I was absolutely gutted, because it's one of those things where Boxing gets a lot of stick. And then we have these nights where we have a we have a product and we have something happening in the spot where we can we can say that is what it's about. Yeah. Every fight is a competitive fight. You've got upsets on there, you know, you you you've got good intriguing fights, you've got exciting fights, you know. And then we can't talk about that because we're talking about a controversial decision we're talking about a decision where you just look at it and you're going what the fuck and everybody's looking at it and thinking what the fuck you know and and so nobody's talking about those fights on undercard you know we always talk about how oh yeah undercard fights are shit this is this blah blah let's just get to minute anyway. this was a show where every fight on the undercard was great i really enjoyed watching i mean the first fight ellie scott now, that was a good fight it was, it was she was a great addition to to, to the women's game but the opponent, Connolly, she was put up a great fight. That was a good competitive fight. But then it just got better and better and better. And it was it, even the fight where, um, if there, if ever there was going to be a fight where you thought, kind of thought, oh, it might be a little bit of a stinker, was, um, yes. And that was a good fight. Yeah. That was a really good fight. Yeah, you know, that. and so, yeah, I'm I'm gutted for the guys on the other card that, that put on that thought. Like, I feel as though we're not talking about them enough. Um, and like you say, it's boxing giving itself its own, uh, you know, its own jab in the face, isn't it?